In this video, we are going to see the bar charts, pie charts, histograms, stem plots, dot plots, and time plots for a data. A data set contains information on a number of individuals. Individuals may be people, animals, or things. For each individual, the data give values for one or more variables. The variables describe some characteristic of an individual, such as person's height, sex, or age. Some variables are categorical and others are quantitative. And we would like to explain this data using the graphs or the plots for the data. Because after we understand the background of our data, that the individuals, variables, units of measurement, the first thing to do most, uh, almost always is uh, plot our data. So let us see how to plot our data here. We are going to see uh, the bar chart, the pie chart, the histogram, the stem plot, the dot plots, and the time plots for the data what we have collected and see which one will fit uh, the data whatever we have collected. When we display the data, they are divided into two, one as categorical data, the other one as quantitative data. The, so the uh, variables can be divided into two categories, categorical, categorical or quantitative. A categorical variable places each individual into a category such as male or female. A quantitative variable has numerical values that measures some characteristic of each individual such as height in centimeters or age in years. Exploratory data analysis uses graphs and numerical summaries to describe the variables in the data such as the relations except to find the relations and other things between among them let us try to understand the background of the data and plot these for the categorical and quantitative so uh, the for the quantitative we have got four different types of data and categorical we have two for a categorical we have two one is a pie chart and the other one is a bar graph the pie chart shows the relative size of each value in relation to the whole. But on the other hand, bar chart displays the categorical variable on one axis and the frequency on the other. The distribution of a variable describes what values the variable takes and how often it takes these values. Pie charts and bar graphs displays the distribution of a categorical variable. Bar graphs can also compare any set of quantities me measured in the same unit. For a quantitative one, we have the four types of graphs, which is a histogram, stem and leaf plot, dot plot, and the time plot. So these are the five plots what we are going to consider. For a qualitative data, let us discuss about the histogram first. After collecting data from a population or a sample, we use histogram to describe the data we collected. We maybe we use the frequency or count on one axis and the other one on the x-axis. Say here in this case we are taking height, height on the x-axis and the number of people with those uh, relative height as frequency on the y-axis. So this diagram shows that between 60 feet and 65 feet there are three and between 65 to 70 there are three black cherry trees with that height between 75 to 80 
there are 10 black cherry is, uh, um, trees with that height and between 85 and 90 there are around one or uh, two um, uh, black cherry trees. We can relate this as a frequency table. So the frequency table gives us a table in detail about the frequency. So between 60 to 65, there are three, 65 to 70, there are three, and say 80 to 85, there are five, etc. But sometimes it will be a little confusing because we would like to know whether that 65 belongs to the first class interval or the second interval, whether 65 is included in the first, first interval or 65 is included in the second interval. But usually it is customary to say that each interval does not include the right end point. In other words, 65 is not included here, whereas 65 is included in the second one. The same way 70 is not included here in the second one, but it is included in the third. 80 is not included here, it is included here in the next one. So by convention, we say that each interval does not include the right end point. And if that is the case, you may be wondering, why can't I take this as 60 to 64 and then 65 to 70, and 65 to 69 and then 70 to 74, something like that. If I'm taking this as 60 to 64, say, the first interval, if I'm taking from 60 to 64 and then 65 to 70, since there is no continuity, what will happen to the case when the height is say 64.5, where will it will that fit? So to avoid that confusion, we prefer taking it this way 60 to 65, which says that just 65 is not included. Everything less than 65 is included in the first interval. Then the same way everything less than 70 is included, even those decimal values can be counted. So there will be a continuity if you're taking it this way. The stem and leaf plot describes the leaf referring the very last number and the stems referring to all of the numbers except the last number. For example, if in my data I have 102, this 2 goes to the leaf and this 10 goes under the stem. So this 10, 2 gives me 102 in fact. So if I if see this uh, stem and leaf, the values are actually 60, 62. If I have in my data 60, 62, 64, um, 65, 65, and 69, that, that will be represented as a stem and plot this way. In a dot plot, I always arrange that in a, sort them out in some order. And after I sort them in order, I take a horizontal line. And above that, I use dots to represent each frequency. So it looks like there are three people with uh, three families with one child and um, two families with four children, etc. So this will uh, explain uh, describe the whole data what I have collected with the dots and this is known as a dot plot. And the time plot shows how a variable changes over time and this diagram represents the time plot. So when observations on a variable are taken over time, make a, we you always make a time plot that graphs time horizontally and the values of the variable vertically. A time plot can reveal trends, cycles, or other um, changes over time. So whenever we see these diagrams here, we can check uh, whether it is symmetric or skewed, skewed to the right, skewed to the left. We can see the shape of it, the center, and how it is spread 
how these things can be obtained for the data whatever we have explained here by plotting the data um, using these graphs so we have a bar graph pie graph histogram dot plot stem and leaf plot and time series to describe the data so in this video we learned uh, we saw what is a bar graph pie chart histogram stem plot dot plot and time plot hope this video was helpful thank you for listening and thank you for watching